What is up everybody? Welcome back to Case Digital. My name is Zach. In today's video, we're answering the question of how to check a string for a specific character in Python. And in fact, I'm gonna give you five different methods that you can use to see whether or not a character that you're looking for exists within a given string. Now, the current setup for this is we have our test string, hello YouTube. And if I run this application, I just say Python, uh, not hello YouTube, but how to check um, a string for a character in Python. I know horrible file name, but I just use that to go along with these videos. And you can see the original is hello YouTube. So let's talk about method number one. All right, so like usual, I'm gonna start off um, showing you kind of the more naive approach or beginner's approach or how, if I was first learning how to program, kind of what I would do if I knew about things like strings and their ability to go through for loops or stuff like that. Um, and then I'm gonna go out to the different functions that are used within the different, you know, the string class or built in within Python that you can use. So the first method um, I wanna say is method number one is going to be basically using loops. I feel like this is one of the easiest methods to use for everything. So I I can just say for val in, or I can say, I'll just call it char in uh, test string. Basically, I'm gonna loop through this. If you don't know about this, essentially what's gonna happen is this char value, every time it goes through the loop, or every time it goes through an iteration in this for loop, is going to be one of the characters in the list. And that, the reason being, is strings can be treated almost, or going through this string, because strings, when they go, when they're iterated through, essentially every index of a string um, is a character. So when I run this, if I print this out, char just to show you essentially you'll see something that looks like this right but that's not what we would want so you see that it prints everything out every time it goes through the loop so i'm just gonna say if now let's say we're looking for the letter o right because there's two o's in there um if we're looking for the letter o if i say if o or if char is equal to o not zero o lowercase o now this is something that probably is good to know uh, I'm gonna run this and then I'll just say break. I'll say something like uh, print the letter O has been found, right? Now, if I run this, you'll see something like there's a string and then the letter O has been found. But here's the caveat. What if I change this to H, lowercase h, and I run this through? You, you see that it was not printed out. The reason being is this is very case sensitive. So if I wanna find whatever character I wanna find, if the case, if sent, uh, I guess if the, whether the case is lower or upper, if that doesn't matter to you, you can do a trick by doing dot lower, which will basically lower the whole, make, make this whole string turn into a lowercase everything. Or you could also do something like upper, which will change this string to look like all caps, right? Um, now, if case if the case does matter and you're looking for a specific character that is uppercase or lowercase, then you're gonna wanna put that right here. So if I put uppercase in there, then I'll change that there. You'll see that the letter H has been found. So case does matter in this sense. So just as a note. Right, and we can do, we can further, if you're doing anything else with this, you can further do something like, uh, if I change this to an, if I change this to an F string, well, you could get the, I guess what I'm trying to do is you could do the index, um, and you can get the index of it, but that would require putting on a, the enumerate function here and whatnot, and just a couple other stuff. But that's kind of outside of the scope of this question. So essentially, that is method number one, using loops um, on how you can find a specific character and whether or not it exists within a um, string. So let's move on to method number two. All right, so method number two, um, this is actually the method that I probably use the most when it comes to doing this, but please continue watching the rest of the methods just because all those other ones actually have some stuff that as I was re doing some re research for this video and trying to remember all the different uh, ways that you can um, see whether or not a character exists, they all, I found some other things that just reminded me of um, different uh, techniques or things that would could be useful for other things um, as well as finding uh, whether or not a character exists. So watch till the end, uh, but essentially method number two is using the in operator um, and now what happens is I'm basically going to just say if or what we can do here is and say is found equals to now again if we go back to our lowercase o that we're looking for o in uh, test string right so I can do this another way to write this same thing is say if o in test string then print so the reason this is, is because this will basically return a true or false. 
and we're looking for this to say, if this is true, then print that. So if I run this, um, I'll just comment that out for now. But if I run this, then, and I'm gonna just put method two, so we know this is method one, so we know, all right? So if we run this again, we see there's the original Hello YouTube. We have method one, H was found, method two, letter O has been found using in. So easy peasy, um, that's how you use it using the inner operator. I use this a ton, it's super great. Um, but now let's talk about uh, you know three other methods that you can use, or, or the other three methods you can use to check whether or not a character is in a string. All right, so this next method is basically going to be using built-in functions for strings. Um, and what we're essentially gonna do is use the built-in function of find, right? This is something that you'd probably expect to be a built-in function or a function that can be used. Um, to find some sort of object, right? So essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to say, basically using this exact same setup, um, we'll probably use the exact same setup for the rest of the video, but essentially um, I'm gonna do this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say test string dot find. Now find, again, like I mentioned, it's a built-in function. What's nice about it is you basically give it the string that you're trying to find. This could be a substring, like more than one character, or in our case, we're trying to find the character exists. So it just be the character in our case. Now what's also nice is you have these optional arguments that you can pass into this function. The first one being the start index. So you can say, I wanna see if this character exists starting from this index. You can also then add the end, it, end, end argument to say, from here to here. I want to check basically between these two indexes. If you don't do anything, it just does the whole string. Now what's also nice is this will return in the index, like I mentioned, if it was found and a negative one if it was not. Now caveat here, you need to be careful, is if I run, um, say I want to find not zero, but O, and I run, you know, if I run this right here, I know it's in there, so this will work, right? If I run what we had before, you see that like method number one and number two, our block gets executed. And that's because in an if statement, if you aren't familiar with, anything that is basically greater than one, um, or excuse me, greater than zero, is treated as basically true um, in this case. And so this returned an index value, which in this case would be zero, one, two, three, four. Um, and it's fine, it won't give you the first index. So like in our case, we have a two zeros in here. It's gonna give us the zero first, uh, it's gonna give us that first one, which is that index of four. Um, and in our case, that's perfectly fine because we're just trying to check if the character exists um, in a string, right? Now, what happens if I do exclamation point and I do this exact same thing? If I run this, it gives me the exact same output. Well, why is that? And the reason being is because, like I mentioned, if it failed, it gives us a negative one. Only zeros are treated in the if block as a false. So if it's a negative one, then that means that the, it's it's not equal to zero, so it's true. You know, it's gonna treat it as true and pass right into that same um, if block. Now, if I say is not equal to, oops, is not equal to uh, negative one, you should see, I should only see two values here. Now, if I run this again, I now only have method number one and number two working. So just a caveat there, if you're gonna use find, it bases things off index and gives you a negative one value if it was not found. So you need to apply this check rather than something, just expecting it to be true or false, right? So you need to make it become a true or false statement. So that's that. If I change this back to a zero, then, or an O, I don't know why I keep doing that. Then we get back to our method, or all three methods, finding our characters, right? Again, this, again, this works with, again, being case sensitive. So it didn't find the lowercase h, but it did find the uppercase h. So just like that, that's working right there. So let's start talking, that's find, um, that's the built-in function of find. So let's talking about, uh, let's start talking about method number four out of our five different methods. All right, so this next function is basically using another built-in string function, um, but kind of in a slightly different way, right? So what I'm gonna use is the count function. And we're basically gonna have that same setup like I mentioned, and what we're gonna do is do something like this, dot count. And then what you're gonna do is it gives the ability, just like with the find function, you pass in your, um, in our case, it's gonna be a character, but you could also do a substring if you wanna use this for finding substrings. Then you can give it starting and ending indexes. Now, if you don't give that, just searches the whole list, right? Now, the difference between find and count is, is obviously count is going to try and count the number of occurrences um, that are, like it says, return the number of non-overlapping non occurrences of a substring. In our case, it's just gonna be a character. Um, but here's the difference. So count, if it doesn't find it, is obviously gonna return a count of zero, which will be treated as false, which will then exit this. 
And if it's found, it's gonna give the number of times it's found, right? So if I just say how many times, or count the number of times we find O, what it's going to do, and this is method number four, I'm going to run this and we get, hey, the letter O has been found. Now, if I just do the exclamation point, what you're going to find is that it doesn't work, right? And the reason being that's different from the find is it's going to return a zero. And zero, like I mentioned, when you're using like an if block is treated as false. And so since it was false or zero, then it just says, skip this, go on, which in our case is good because of the fact that we know that if given our original string, we know that the exclamation point is not in there. And so we can use this count method, super easy and move on, right? Uh, because we know it's not there. So if I run, go back to the letter O, or actually I wanna go again, this is just like all these other things, this is case sensitive. You know, letter H was not found, but if I go say capital H, we get method four and run this, I get method four now appearing. Granted, we didn't update our string there, so it says, O, but uh, same thing, case sensitive. All this is case, pretty much all this is case sensitive. So um, that's method number four. Now let's get to our final and last method that you can use to check whether or not a character exists. In a, in a string. All right, before we jump into number five, I just want to recap, quick recap what we've done so far. We've used the naive approach of loops. Then we've had used how to use the in operator to find whether or not a character exists within a string. And then we went and used two different um, built-in functions for the string class to help you uh, find um, use, find if a character exists. And we've tested the find one and the count one. Now we're gonna go back um, kind of more to like the in operator, we're going, going to use a built-in Python function. Uh, now the in, op in operator is an operator, and now we're gonna use the built-in function of any. Um, and now what this does is any takes in um, basically an iterable. And what an iterable is, something you can iterate through. So it, we're gonna basically treat this as, or we basically need to treat this as a list comprehension technique. So I can say using this exact same right here, oops. So this is method number five. Oops, I can count. And what I can do here is I need to say something like any, and then like my IntelliSense here says, pass it in an interval, returns true if it was found, if any true is found, and then otherwise it's an empty list which returns false. So that kind of goes back to our count thing where we don't have to say something like we did with fine where it's not equal to whatever. Um, we can just say, ideally we should just be able to say any, give it this whole condition, and then if, it's, if it finds it, it'll go into our block and say method five. If it doesn't find it, it won't go into the block, right? So now the way to do this is I can say um, val equals the character that we want to find for um, val in test string. Now this is kind of a mixture or this is kind of like we did right here, right? We loop through um, and I can even change this to char. We are looping through a list and we're basically using the list hopper comprehension technique and just saying, go through the list and if this, we set this condition, which means that as this goes through, what this is going to do is build up a list of true and falses. Um, and if it hits this condition and if it, it matches, right, it's gonna be true, otherwise it's gonna be false. And so what any is going to do is then look inside that giant list. So like what I, I guess what I'm saying just to show you um, is we'll get something like this. It's gonna create a list that's gonna say, true or in our case it's going to say false false so for zero one two three so four of them false false and then it's going to say true and then it's going to say space so that's false then false then true then false false you know and so on right it's going to build up this list and then from that point it's going to get passed to this any function and this any function is really just looking through this list and is there at least one true if there's at least one true then it returns true otherwise it returns false so that's essentially what's happening there um, and if we run this what we should see is now method number five shows up so if we run it boom just like that method number five the letter O has been found using any now again I can go back to our exclamation point example and run this and you should only see methods one through four show up so just like that, there are five different methods that you can use to check for a character or check if a character exists within a string. Um, now, again, I would mostly use, um, to be honest, I would use the in if you're just checking the existence of a character. But like I, we've walked through this, essentially, hey, what index is that character at? Okay, I found the character or I found the index and I can go through there. Um, how many are there? How many of this character are there? I can use this method and it'll give me the exact number. Um, you know, or if I need to say, hey, yeah, I can say, are there any, you know, a lot of times when you start out, you learn how to do loops, you learn that you can loop through a 
list, get the um, individual, individual, individual characters. And you also should know by the time you learn lists, like if statements and whether or not how to check if something is equal or not. And so a lot of times people start here, but hopefully this video has brought you closer to different techniques and different things that can give you answers. So that way you don't essentially have to always loop through the whole thing and do everything you want. You can use these, you know, built in tricks and Python methods that essentially will allow you really quickly to tell you different types of thing um, other than just if it exists, right? And now in our cases, we found if they exist, they have certain conditions or not. But I hope this video has provided value. If it has, please hit the like button. And if you have any questions, comments, or, you know, or running into any issues with any of these, please leave a comment below. I love to answer people's questions and, you know, I'll either try and directly answer it right there or I'll try and make a follow on video. Um, and this could be about anything. This could be about what we've talked about today, or it could be about, hey, I'm having trouble with this topic. Can you provide a video on that? Love to help. Um, so hope this helps. And until next time, keep on programming.